1986. Gerhard Berger launches out of the Parabolica in his Benetton B-186, the turbo screaming like a jet engine about to blow itself apart. The boost gauge needles past 5 bar. He's already at 219 miles an hour, down the straight, the fastest speed Formula One has ever recorded. The Austrian in the tremendously powerful 1,350 horsepower in qualifying trim, BMW-powered Benetton. Over the radio, his engineer yells, ship now! or it'll explode. Because under that green carbon body sits a 1.5 liter engine with more power than a Bugatti Chiron, and it's seconds away from melting itself into history. Welcome back to Hidden Car Gems, the channel where we talk about cars that make absolutely no sense. And today's machine? It's an engine so violent, so extreme, the FIA literally had to ban it from Formula One. It all started with a humble street motor, the BMW M10. Born in the early 1960s, it powered family sedans with around 90 horsepower. Reliable, boring, unkillable. Two decades later, BMW's racing division looked at that same block and said, let's see what happens if we give it five times the air it was ever meant to breathe. That thought created the BMW M1213 Turbo, a four-cylinder demon forged from German logic and total lunacy. They didn't even cast new blocks. They dug through scrapyards for old, abused M10s, engines that had already survived hundreds of heat cycles. The metal was pre-aged, dense, and stress-tested by time. Those were nicknamed experienced blocks, and they'd soon face hell itself. Every core was stripped, acid cleaned, x-rayed for cracks, and rebuilt with forged pistons, thicker head bolts, and a turbo so enormous you could lose a soccer ball in it. The first prototypes didn't just fail, they exploded. The dino cell looked like a war zone. Flames through the exhaust, shards through the walls, and engineers running for cover. But lead engineer Paul Roche didn't flinch. He calmly adjusted fuel maps and said, again. They kept pushing until it survived for more than 10 seconds, then 30, then a whole minute. By 1983, the monster was barely tamed, just long enough to win. Nelson Piquet's Barbram BT-52 powered by BMW's Turbo took the 1983 World Championship, the first ever won by a turbocharged engine. From a family sedan block to the top of Formula One, that wasn't engineering, it was controlled insanity. At idle, it made 550 horsepower. In race trim, about 750. And in qualifying trim, a monstrous 1,400 horsepower from only 1.5 liters. That's nearly 1,000 horsepower per liter. A figure even modern engines whisper about. The dyno couldn't keep up. It maxed out at 1,280 horsepower, and the engine just kept climbing until it literally blew the exhaust off. Roche later said, We never knew how much power it made. The dyno stopped measuring before the engine stopped accelerating. Qualifying engines had the lifespan of a mayfly. Two laps, maybe three. After that, they were molten scrap. Mechanics didn't rebuild them. They performed funerals. Even the detuned race setup, 850 horsepower, was twice as strong as most modern F1 cars. The whole car weighed barely 1,300 pounds, a power-to-weight ratio that made supercars look like mopeds. Fuel economy? Forget it. At full boost, it drank fuel, faster than you could blink. They measured consumption in seconds per gallon, not miles. Before we go further, quick reality check. I'm on a mission to hit a thousand subscribers. If you love band tech, absurd power, and mechanical madness like this, hit that subscribe button. Let's reach a thousand together, because legends like this deserve an audience. BMW was one of the first to use digital engine management in Formula One. Tiny processors monitored boost and fuel with millisecond precision. A miracle in an era when computers filled whole rooms. But even with electronics, the M1213 was barely tameable. Turbo lag was savage. You'd floor the throttle, nothing. Half a second later, the turbo hit and launched the car like a slingshot. Drivers called it the punch of God. Gerhard Berger joked that every lap was a gamble. Would the boost arrive mid-corner or mid-spin? At full tilt, his Benetton hit 219 miles per hour down Monza straight. That's 352 kilometers per hour on tires as thin as your forearm. Inside the cockpit, it was sensory overload. Heat, vibration, and the smell of fuel thick enough to taste. The turbo glowed bright orange. Each upshift felt like being hit from behind by a truck. By 1985, F1 had turned into a horsepower arms race. Honda, Ferrari, Renault. They all tried to match BMW. Engines exploded weakly, pit walls rattled, fans were absolutely insane, and deep down the FIA was terrified. In 1987, the governing body installed a pop-off valve, a small spring cap to limit boost to four bar. Supposedly, it would save the engines and the drivers. Instead, teams cheated physics. 
They modified the plumbing so the valve fluttered open late, letting pressure surge past the limit. Power stayed above 900 horsepower, and the madness continued. A year later, the FIA halved the limit again to 2.5 bar. Power dropped to roughly 640 horsepower. The car slowed, the danger faded, and so did the magic. In 1989, turbo engines were banned altogether. Just like that, the era of fire-breathing F1 monsters was gone, replaced by smooth, naturally aspirated V10s and V12s. Amazing machines but nowhere near as terrifying. The BMW M1213 had pushed the sport too far. It wasn't banned for breaking the rules. It was banned for breaking reality. Ask anyone from that generation. The BMW Turbo felt alive, and it wanted you dead. A single overboost could melt pistons in half a second. A missed shift could throw rods through the block. The throttle wasn't a pedal, it was a trigger. Mechanics wore ear protection just to start it. The sound wasn't a roar, it was a gunfight. Each combustion stroke cracked the air like thunder. At 11,000 RPM, the vibration shook tools off the bench. Fuel mixtures were toxic. Toline, benzene, methanol. The garages reeked like chemical plants. Exhaust flames stretched six feet. And during night runs, the whole track glowed orange. Spectators didn't just hear the car, they felt it. When Berger or PK passed, their chests vibrated from the pressure wave. It was violent, dangerous, and utterly addictive. Even rival drivers were in awe. Alain Prost once called a BMW a grenade with a steering wheel. Kiki Rosberg said after testing it, you don't drive it, you survive it. Every lap was a negotiation with death. Every finish line felt like victory over physics itself. Despite all the chaos, BMW's precision was surgical. Each component was hand-measured and cataloged. Blocks were seasoned, bolts, torque stretched, turbos calibrated by year. It was both science and witchcraft. Rosh's team became legends. When asked how he built such power, he simply shrugged and said, we trusted the metal and gave it hell. That phrase defines the 1980s turbo era. There were no simulations, no CFD models, just instinct, courage, and boost. If something broke, you made it thicker. If it still broke, you turned the boost up anyway. They didn't chase efficiency, they chased dominance and found it. The other teams feared BMW's four-cylinder. Renault's engineers mocked it at first, until it outran their V6. Ferrari called it too small to matter, then watched it win races. Drivers whispered about it in the paddock. It was small, ugly, brutally effective. No music like a V12, just one deafening detonation after another. When it fired up, conversations stopped. Even rival teams would gather outside BMW's garage just to feel the pressure wave. Every burst of throttle sent dust off the ceiling. To them, it wasn't just an engine. It was proof that courage could outperform budget. BMW didn't have Ferrari money, but they had the balls to go further. There are endless stories about those engines. The rumor that BMW used junkyard blocks. True that they tested at night to hide explosions. Also true. That mechanics blessed engines with holy water. Well, maybe just beer. The truth is stranger than the myths. They tested until the walls shook. Dino cells filled with smoke, exhausts glowed white. And when one survived a full power run, the crew cheered like they'd landed on the moon. It was madness, but it worked. When the FIA banned turbos, it saved lives but ended an era. Racing lost a bit of its soul. Modern F1 engines make similar power, but they whisper instead of scream. They use hybrids, recovery systems, and software, not guts and gunpowder. BMW did it in the 1980s with iron, fire, and sheer willpower. They didn't care about regulations or fuel flow. They cared about making history. The M1213 proved you don't need size to dominate. You need audacity. It won races, won championships, and terrified the sport into rewriting its rulebook. Even now, decades later, when one of those engines fires up for a museum demo, crowds still cover their ears and grin like kids. You can smell the fuel, feel the heat, and imagine the madness that once ruled Formula One. It's not nostalgia, it's respect. Because everyone watching knows they'll never build anything like it again. If you made it this far, respect. You're part of the Hidden Car Gems family now. Every like, every comment, every subscriber pushes the channel closer to that 1,000 sub goal. I make these videos because machines like this remind us that logic builds cars, but madness builds legends. So smash that button, share the story with someone who loves pure mechanical chaos, and keep the fire alive. This was the BMW M1213 Turbo, the 1.5 liter, 1,400 horsepower monster that Formula One had to kill before it killed something else.